and, and you want to have the guy in your house, you know, you want to move the guy <laughs> and just say, you come live with me, and if there's a Tiffany note, you, you need to play it. The sound is so magnificent. So, and it, it, it just, it, it begins and it's in four, it's not in eight. Bum, 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 And it just, it's so brilliant that uh, just even thinking of it, the hair on my arm just stands up. So we've done that and now we're at the Beef Labs. So just let's get this going in a nice fashion and think about the timpani and the resonance of the timpani. And I know you guys have, that know me a little bit, I have two words that I like, and this is the R word. Uh, sorry, this is a trick, you don't know me. But it's resonance. We have two things in our favor, resonance and the A word, articulation. So we have both in play here. It's the only way, when the second clarinet, when any second clarinet player can wipe us out uh, in volume, we, we need to have volume, but it's not something we're ever going to win. But we can do a lot with the articulation, and we can do a lot with the resonance. So by making the clarity of that, of the beginning of your note, and then a nice cloud of resonance afterwards, ball, 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 so that it's nice and free. And one of the issues is that our tradition, and this is one of those 20th century traditions that I'd like to see us get rid of, is that we play it with a hook. Uh, 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 and what happens to the note in between? Do it and see the start. Ah, you can fix it. Nice. Did you hear it? Fix it? Perfect. That's brilliant. You get the prize of the day. <coughs> so, <coughs> often we're, we let the bow be lazy and sit in the string. Ba, uh, uh, and then what do we got? We got nothing. You know, we got something that sounds like that instead of Mozart. So that's perfect. Try it with an open bowing without the hook altogether and just see what that feels like. And ball, 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 see how that feels. Okay, so the secret is what do we do with the bow in between? Do we? Okay. You're, you're worried about how much? 
of sound to make? Don't. Just put the bow on the string, nice and flat, and then with your body, just lean on it. Just have it work for you. You don't have to press. Just let it happen. It's getting there. It's getting there. Now, when you make your string crossing, be ready for each string crossing. that 
he wanted? And he said, yes, he was amazed. He did everything he wanted. But he wanted the older guy, Sam Hollingsworth, <laughs> who had already had two or three jobs and was principal of a chamber orchestra at the time. So it was a great experience because it taught me how many ways can you leave your lover. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty famous tune, that, that we know, and, and we have to do that all the time. And it's not easy because lots of folks will, but well, this is the way I play it. Okay. All right. So let's look at what's there and we'll deal with what you have. It's a down bow, but all down bows are not a frog. So if you start it like in the upper third of the bow and you keep the, what's the dynamic in that spot? Yeah. And how is your piano? <laughs> okay, so Chris is running red hops, so he's he's already got to be really careful with the quality of his sound, and he also has to be careful with the P word, because the the piano on the red hops is is a matter of opinion, and so we have to we have to withdraw to the fingerboard a little bit, and we have to be sure that you float through all of those string crossings, so that the red hops don't bite anybody, and particularly not you. So, all right, go for it. Start start in the upper third of the bow. Good. In, this is an, always an interesting way, and I'll do it over again too. So, and you even I do have the version of this that's overhand, which is very interesting. Uh, it's also original. It, it has a little bit of camber in here, which is I find fascinating. And it's, it's on an Italian model, which, of course, this music wasn't written for overhand bow, it was written for underhand bow. But it does exist, and there is a little, a little bit of camber in here. But the thing we want to be careful about with the camber is that if it bites the string at all in the beginning. So if you start out here, and you, you give it an Edgar boom, so you know one of these things where it's, it's almost as if he was doing one of his other things, which... <laughs> he starts the bow, and often you don't see him start the bow. You ever notice that? You don't see him start. Why is that? It's because he moves something, usually his left buttock, <laughs> and it just then the thing starts, and it just starts without doing anything in here, anything in the hand, arm, wrist, any place. So you just get yourself set there, and as you start your down bow, just kind of. Just kind of move your body into the down bow and allow the bow to start the sound. And your left hand, be sure that you're really nicely centered with your pitch in the left hand. So that it makes a huge difference about starting your bow. Okay, it was perfect except for one thing. I want you to notice when you start, just before you started, there was a downward move that went along with this move. So here's a nice thing to do. Just put your bow on the string and then move your bass towards me. Thank you. Right. So it's way easier, you know. It isn't about any of that stuff. It's just about getting the thing moving. Yeah. Okay. So if, uh, do, it, do the moving bass trick again and then we'll do your left hand, right hand. And when you be careful that you don't respond to that in your other hand. Just put it on and don't change it. That's the idea. All right, so now put it on there. And then when you start, one, two, three, one. One, two, three, one. And remember, this has to be, not only is it a down bow, it's a down bow circular movement, which is like that. If we go, then we've got a whole other element in there to deal with. So just this nice little circle. Ideally, 
how do I want this to sound? So you and I are going to do a little vocal number here. <coughs> you up for that? Sure. All right. One, two, three, one. It's so classic, it's so perfect. 
And there's nothing in the world that says that we can't do exactly the same thing. All we have to do is we'll wrap it around a little bit or drop it down here and do exactly the same thing. Thank you, Chris. That was great.